Hey guys, my name is Matt Dickens, and in today's Microchip Minutes, we decided to address a problem that most developers run into sooner or later. You realize halfway through working with a particular chip that you really could use one more peripheral, and your chip just doesn't have what you need left. Well, today's tutorial will teach you to use the CLC to make an additional peripheral. While we decided to focus on a PWM signal in this video, the CLC is great for providing the connectivity and versatility to make a wide range of new peripherals by combining different on-chip components. Like other core independent peripherals, the beauty of this solution is that the developer won't have to write any code. The components keep running entirely independent from the CPU. We will use Timer2 as a free running period timer where a clockwise pulse triggers after the timer increments up to the user defined value. We will also use Timer4 as a hardware limit timer in monostable mode which means it will trigger a low pulse for the defined period and then a high until it has been reset by an external event. We will combine these in our configurable logic cell configured as an SR latch. The output will be our newly made PWM signal. Here is a look at the individual signals and how they create the final signal. Timer 2 sets the SR latch while triggering the timer 4 to start counting. After timer 4 has reached its period value, the on bit triggers and waits for an external reset. The high output of timer 4 resets the SR latch and sends the CLC output low until the next timer 2 pulse. Before we start the timer, make sure that you have an MCC window open similar to what is showing on the screen. If you do not know how to get this to the window, pause the video and check out the tutorial in the links below for directions. You can access this environment through MPLAB Express Online IDE or through Microchips IDE MPLAB X. Once you have reached this window, unpause the video and let's start the timer. We want to get the peripherals from within the device resources box. Grab a CLC module and then grab a timer 2 and timer 4. Click on timer 2. This timer will set the period of our PWM signal. Change the source to FOSC over 4, which is the base clock, and will keep our two timers in sync. Next, change the prescaler to 1 to 32. Finally, change the period to 20 milliseconds, which was chosen arbitrarily for this example, though it can be useful when working with the servos. After setting up timer 2, double check on timer 4. Set the clock source to FOSC over 4 similar to timer 2. Set the prescaler to 1 to 4 so that we can set our period of timer 4 to 4 milliseconds. This sets the high time for our PWM signal. Because we are using the timer in monostable mode, it will need a reset, so set that as timer 2. Finally, set the control mode to monostable. It is also important to remember that because this is an HLT operation, the timer operates without the postscaler so do not change the postscaler value. Navigate to the CLC screen by double clicking on CLC1 under Project Resources. We want an SR latch, so choose that option from the drop down menu. Next, we will be connecting input 1 to the first OR gate and input 3 into the third. Click the small X's to connect the respective inputs to their gates. Next, choose the input 1 source as timer 2 equals PR2 or when the timer reaches its postscaled period value. Choose the same option for timer 4 as input 3. Our last job is to set the output of the CLC to a pen so we choose RA3. Once you have done this, click generate. This program does not need any written code because it does not need to use the CPU. Click the make and generate button and stop the timer because we are finished. Here we have a screen capture of the signal outputs using an oscilloscope. The top signal is a look at the output of our CLC or the PWM signal we created. The second and third lines are using CLCs in an AND OR configuration to look at the timer outputs. You can do this too if you want by inverting the input to one side of the AND gates and connecting the desired timer output to the other side of the AND gate. Looking back at the O-scope outputs, timer 2 outputs a pulse of one clock length to the set input of our SR latch. This simultaneously sets the output of the CLC to a high and the output of timer 4 low. After a pulse of about 4 milliseconds long, which was the user defined period, the output of timer 4 goes high. This is connected to the reset of the SR latch, which means the timer 4 output will drive the output of the CLC low. That wraps up this microchip minutes. My name is Matt Dickens, and a big thanks for following along. Stay tuned for future minutes and a closer looks.